we are real juicy news and a couple of hours ago we happened to be looking on social media at some news reports news, news reports and there was a meeting or a debate between a national party member Maori rights leader and a younger person obviously all MPs or activists yeah whatever to do with the uh, Maori right and they're saying these different things he's changing things back and forth and one kept interrupting saying oh rubbish rubbish you know and then this lady would talk and he'd say oh rubbish you know it's a back and forth but he, at least he wasn't interrupting right he was leading her to talk but they kept interrupting him um, about Maori not getting the rights losing their rights etc etc the treaty being annulled the treaty of Waitangi or they're changing it um, the wording etc this traffic light system where you get different levels like a traffic light and you have to get a job right if you get if you've got the doll the government or unemployment benefit right you have to get a job you have to be open to go to interviews and get a job and so forth right because basically they're saying the national prime minister and whoever that lady was with him is probably judy collins or something judy collins uh saying yeah well basically uh green light you're all right you because know, there's benefit uh rules etc like that so you'll be all right there if you're following all the rules and doing this and doing that and then you've got the middle light, amber or yellow, uh, you're supposed to go get a job and all this sort of stuff, turn up for the work seminars, all this sort of stuff. You're on this point where you might lose your benefit or something. And then when you get to the red light, that means like you're totally not doing what they're asking you, turning up for work seminars, looking for a job, uh, all this sort of stuff, right? So you're in the danger zone. Plus they have this, uh, some sort of card like a benefit card so that when your benefit so much of your benefit goes on there you go shopping and you can only buy certain stuff and they get a record of it right of what you've bought if you bought cigarettes alcohol don't know about it right it's like the tax department and the, uh, the welfare crying or or housing New Zealand uh, the airport etc etc being able to look into your bank account to see what money you've got and probably where you've spent it right so yeah they have that information and these people come around with these surveys and all that sort of stuff we're kind of wary of them now because they say oh with security you know your community has problems what do you think you know blah 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 and it gives you the impression that they're trying to improve that situation right but as an individual i'd solve the problem myself or people coming on the property and stealing and all this sort of stuff by putting wire fences up and all this sort of stuff keeping them out of there we just received a whole pile of uh, platforms wood right that this person had uh, on his house okay they're trying to board it up and all this sort of stuff so grab that board and trailer so yeah that helps as well because we have asked Kaing Aura or Housing New Zealand to build a fence but they said no we can't do that it's out of our budget how about a dog oh nah Yes, it depended on different people that we were talking to they had this attitude oh okay this person next door is throwing shoes and rocks on our shed <laughs> you, 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 no they would never do that <laughs> well this is sort of stuff right they were undermining us yeah and when we confronted those people and said hey well, we can't grow their kids right their kids so you see we talk to the parent and the parent just laughs and speaks in their language right thinks it's funny okay but this person that come around a landlord type lady you know tenancy lady comes around and just laughed about it oh nah nah you, you're just trying to be funny you know, no one does that so, well, she's calling you, basically she's calling you a lie okay so um, they want to do all these things right so that's when it becomes bad that's when it becomes evil yeah when they want to make those kind of changes and they're getting all racist you know you can see it's all biased racist orientated etc yeah? So yeah, um, because New Zealand and Australia are basically Muppets, they're testing lands for the US. And if they want to try something over here, uh, you know, they've got there, they want to try it here, it usually comes here, or we follow suit, right? 
like there was this one where certain people get a new birth certificate and then they become such and such and such and such, right? And you can't do anything about it. So they'll be able to probably disguise themselves and you wouldn't have a clue because they'd say, well, here's my birth certificate, right? Okay, it's all legal because of, right? They, it started up in Germany and New Zealand wanted to do it here. Uh, Ministry of the Real, no, Ministry of the Truth, that um, they call it George Orwell in 1984 concept where all the information goes to them and they deem it false, right? And their truth is what matters. Yeah, that sort of thing, if you've ever read 1984, seen that movie. Right? They're all in control of it. They wanted, apparently, to make the manufacturers of uh, all your motherboards and your computer, your phone, whatever technology you're using to contact, communicate with other people. They wanted to have it so that if you talked about certain things, right, or you claim truths, it would go to them. Yeah, it would automatically go through your phone or your computer, whatever, to them. Okay, and then they would say, no, nah, that's rubbish. This is the truth. What we say is the truth. What you say is rubbish. So if you are highly qualified, uh, renowned, for the M-A, B-A, K-F-C, whatever, after your names, they won't care, right? No, no, no. Our truth is the truth. That's what the ministry of truth is, okay? Um, it's all control. Okay, so... People really need to stop and, and be quiet, right? They need to listen to what these people have to say, take notes, and go do personal research on it too. Uh, they've written down these people's claims, okay, they made notes of it. So they're gonna go and do research and find out for themselves, okay, is this person's claims fact? Are they established facts? Do they synchronize with these like two or three others, okay? from different parts of the country, maybe outside the country, whatever, that say, yeah, the same thing, basically, say so they're in agreement. So that's when it synchronizes, right? And then they've got to have that evidence that proves itself evident. Okay? Then they've got to like find out, do the research, do investigative journaling, journalism, whatever, and find out if those claimants are the real deal. Okay? If they're irrefutable, infallible. Okay? Because in their writings, yeah, etc., etc., or their supposed facts the evidence is irrefutable or infallible right you can still be debunked because people could would debunk it anyway you know it's like a top scientist says oh no you're actually wrong there this is what we found in blah 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 and then another one goes nah he's rubbish he's talking rubbish because technologically technicality whatever you know well that talk okay there's someone else to go oh no but he's wrong that guy's wrong you know we got someone else to go no he's wrong right so it goes around in circles like that, like a dog chasing its tail. Okay, so, yeah, you have to do investigative journalism, look behind the scenes at those particular people, see if there's any dirt on them, okay? You can use that evidence. Oh, this guy lied about this. He was saying this, but all the time he's lying about this, and hey, he's involved with that. You can use that to bring them down, but it's not a necessity. It's just like, are you aware that, you know, there's been reports that you've been seen frequenting a known hotel you're in there with somebody else you're wearing a frilly dress you know you're a guy <laughs> you got arrested for that what was going on there you know that sort of thing yeah um okay yeah so you need to stop be quiet listen write down all the notes and then go do the research on those particular people So we're going to go back uh, and touch on our former statement again about all the indigenous Maori, Maori, and others, New Zealand citizens, doing it all wrong. Okay, we tend to. Yeah, this is why, because we tend to think, because we are taught, yeah, educated, yeah, through the media, etc. Uh, on the ideas by other foreigners, right? People outside, people, Americans, the English, whatever, whoever this resonates with, okay? That their self help system, because they're self help motivators, gurus, however you want to call them, etc., that we should buy their books, 
listen to their audio series, attend their seminars, their live seminars, etc., which is quite an expensive personal cost, right? It's not cheap. And that's how they're making their money. Yeah? They don't know you personally. They'll never meet you. They're telling you or relating to you what I did, what he did to become successful. Yeah? He did these steps, that, those steps, the, the steps. But he also sold a book. He's just made $3,000 per person. Say there's 1,000 to 2,000, 6,000 people there. He's making a decent cut of that, isn't he? He's got to, you know, gets a percentage. But he's still walking away with lots and lots of money. So he can afford a mansion, a, the latest car, a, a private jet, you know, a private woman, all that sort of stuff, right? He's got all that at his fingertips. Yeah? He doesn't know you. He's never met you as an individual and work with you. So here's a plan for you. Specifically, do it. It'll work for you, okay? He's just telling you what he did. And he's selling you a book. And he's telling you, after the book made 30,000 sales or 30 million sales or whatever, he's got a hell of a lot of money in a bank. Oh, um, oh yeah, here's part two to um, wake up and live like a giant. Um, I forgot to put this in the other book. Here's the secret, right? And you go read it. You think, oh, yeah, you got the secret. And then you come out with another book. Oh, yeah, this is the secret I forgot to put in the other book, the second book. So here's the secret, you yeah? know? Well, this is stuff. And the other people on the outside, like Oprah, you should say, uh, well, you know, you're saying this this idea works. What about the 60,000 people it didn't work for? You know? Well, this is stuff. And then you get these other social media videos that you say, oh, well, that, that, that doesn't actually work. Do it this way. And someone else is saying, no, no, that doesn't actually work. Do it this way. And it's just a continual circle, a dog chasing its tail, right? Because all like clickbait, want the subscribers, get the viewers, whatever, it's all statistics, so they make money, right? Yeah? They're very business-wise, very business-orientated. Yeah? We can put up a uh, pseudo-video, you think, oh yeah, it's this really hot babe, right? Okay, something like, um, oh, who's the hottest babe around now? F uh, fully exposed. Right, and you might have a blurry picture of some woman, yeah, and it gets these people going, getting their hopes up, and they look at it because they think it's a something saucy, right? And it turns out to be a religious video <laughs> or some sort of self-help thing, right? You got them, right? It's nothing, not really anything to do with the subscribers. It's good to get the subscribers and the views and stuff, but what we were told by someone else is it's the statistics. How many people watch your videos? How does it rank on Google? How does it rank on YouTube? All that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, we thought it was all about getting subscribers, so we tried hard, hard, hard. Why aren't we getting subscribers? Why aren't we getting them like, you know, in the thousands? And getting them one at a time, five a day. We're still happy with that, yeah. We're not like really into making millions from it as a, what do you call that? Influence or that sort of stuff. We just enjoy being creative and stuff. But if you draw money from, you know, uh, what's that thing called? AdSense or whatever, well, that's great. You know, you, you're being paid for the work. Yeah, But we're not like the other ones where they're pushing it. Or oh, uh, somebody drop us $10 or $20, um, you know, buy me a coffee or, or whatever the other one is. Um, it starts with P, can't remember the damn thing. Um, Pantheon or something. Um, yeah, that's sort of options, right? Come on, people. Come on. Need to pay my bills, you know, that's just we're not like that. Even though people have accused us of being ang self aggrandizing and all this other rubbish. Okay? So, we suggest that, we suggested earlier that you need to become an individual, not an individual of a massive team that's being taught by these elites who are true individuals, right? Okay. So, what you're doing is wrong. You need to find the way or means to break free from your bad habits, addictions, that you feel you must have this, must have the vape, oh, I've got to have the alcohol and the drugs, I've got to have the weed, you know, you got kids that are hungry, and feed them first, you know, all that sort of stuff. You go, oh, but I need that stuff, you know, because I stress, yeah, fair enough, but do you really need it? you got kids, yeah? Let's say, for example, you get the benefit, you click in, you're a single person, you click in the benefit, right? Okay. You're an individual. 
you're part of a big group that's getting it. You're not actually an individual. Yeah? But think as an individual. A single person. You've got no partner, etc. Et no wife, no kids. Yeah? Do you live in a cheap housing? A cheap housing by housing New Zealand or Kyung Aura. Yeah, you pay about 100 bucks a week. So, let's say you get a benefit. Let's say, uh, just for argument's sake, you get about oh, 480 or something by chance, right? For whatever, right? Maybe you get accommodation, maybe you don't. So you got got 400 to 480, right? In your bank every Tuesday or Thursday or whatever. And it's just you. Nobody else is home. No daughters, no family, whatever, right? No one else, no borders. Um, or maybe have a border. What? It's up to you. Okay, so you got this hunk of money, right? So naturally, you got to go and buy food. I mean, you can't eat the grass outside. We probably could try, but you know, the leaves off the tree, if you're Adam and Eve or something like that, right? But you need decent food, right? You need milk, bread, butter, coffee, whatever, you know, like that. Okay, so you put aside so much, you think, okay, how much, well, what do I need this week? Okay, I need this, I need that, right? You write a shopping list and you go get it, right? You get, you, hunt, you chase the bargains, eh? you know? Oh, two for five, three for five at New World or whatever. Okay, you've got to use your brain, you've got to use your intelligence, okay? So, you put aside the $100 for your shopping, right? Say, so what, you got about 300 left? Okay, maybe your power is due, okay? So you got to put the next week or something like that, right? So, you put money aside for that, okay? Et cetera, et cetera, to do that, right? Okay, the whole goal is to try and put yourself ahead with that money, right? You've got the spare money. Don't go and buy the latest PS5 and all this just because you want to impress the neighbours or your niece or something, you know. Or show, you know, show off to the neighbours. Hey, I got a PS5. He goes, Yes, yeah, so what? I got a PS6. You know, you're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Okay, you got car payments and whatever, whatever. Fair enough. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to set yourself up where it's cheaper for you. You see, everybody thinks you got to be a guru. Got got to follow these gurus or this manifestation stuff all this sort of poo-ha right um you don't have to do that we we realize wake up and realize that okay we're at an advantage 2015-16 right we were bringing in a, a lot of money like that was owed to us okay and we weren't getting penalized for it there would be the odd silly note that says oh it looks like you've been um getting the dole while you're working uh, no, I was getting it before that, and I got a job for six months, seven months, a year, whatever, two years. So, yeah, no dole, bro. Go, oh, okay, we need to, um, they changed their mind, right? Oh, we need to update your uh, tax uh, thing, whatever, right? Well, this is stuff, okay? Yes, here, fill out this, fill out that. We didn't have to fill it out. The information's there, right? So we didn't bother filling it out. And they said, oh, okay, looks like we owe you money. See, you didn't have to fill it out. Or someone will send us a bill saying, oh, the power line outside is broken, um, you broke it. This is just an example, right? So you have to pay, even if a car hits it, right? And, and it's the wires connected to a house, you've got to pay $3,000 for that damn pole, right? Or something like that, yeah? And so you, you can't get away with it, right? You can't get around it if they're pushing, right? And things like that happen, okay? So you've got to be aware of all that as well. Okay, so you get this hunk of money, you, you put this aside for your uh, food, whatever, what you need, right? You might not need much that way, okay? So what you do, if you've got a fridge or, and a freezer, it's really helpful if you've got that, and a pantry, right? You go buy cheap airs, not too cheap, you know, some of those cans of food, real cheap, like, Pam's is okay, but these other ones that are like, oh, it tastes like crap, you know? It's like, oh, the fruit, oh, yuck, it tastes, tastes horrible, it's that juice or something, right? So yeah, you go to New World or something like that, or where it's cheaper, three for five, four for five, whatever, you know, get those bargains, right, look for the bargains. Right? And you're building up your stores, yeah, in your pantry. You've got dry food, you know, peas and beans and all that sort of stuff, right, for emergencies. In the wintertime, create soups and all that sort of stuff, right, broths and chicken broth and all that sort of stuff. It's really good if you have, like, an old grandma or a nana or whatever that knows all that stuff. She's still around. She teaches you that, right, before she... Yeah, before you get sick of her and put her in a rest home or whatever you do, right? Um, or she passes on. Yeah. Learn all that stuff from here. Learn how to make the rare one bread, you know, marry bread, all that sort of stuff, fat scones, you know, all that sort of stuff. Because when they're gone, it's like, oh, damn, wish I had some, wish I knew how to do that. And nobody's, everyone else is like, oh, I got no idea how to do that. You know, only these oldies knew. Right? That's why we wish they had have taught us all that, right? 
so you can carry on doing that. So yeah, put this money aside for that, right? You might have some power to pay in next week or something like that. Let me put it aside, right? By creating an emergency fund account. You go to the bank with your ID and all that, and you open another account. That's solely an emergency fund account. This is one where you don't touch it. For no reason, you don't touch it, right? Any reason, no excuse. You put, you might get a direct credit, put 20, whatever you can afford, 10 bucks, it's something, right? Goes into your, into that bank account every week or at the end of the month or whatever, right? Because over time it builds up, okay? You'll be surprised. Oh, damn, you know? Look at your bank statement, I've got two grand in there I never had before, okay? So basically the emergency funders bank account is like you're not touching it it's for emergencies say if you have a job you lost your job okay you're into receivership or whatever or you just got sacked for an unfair reason okay you got your redundancy pay or your last payment right you can go to the welfare and say no nah, no nah, you have to spend that first you know and it takes 10 days or 10 months or something <laughs> whatever they say to you before you can get in the doll you have to spend all that first right well this all these legalities right so you're stuck, okay? You go, oh, I've got to pay this, got to pay that. Okay, it's going to be a big chunk out of it. But at least you have, you, you won't have to worry, you won't have to stress because, oh man, you don't get all angry at them. You know, they're only there to do their job. You know, they're, they're the front desk, they're the Muppets, like the ones up at the top, okay? okay they, they basically t tell you what they've been taught, told to say. It's a front desk person, right? So there's no point in getting angry at them, you know, with this sort of stuff. You know, frustrated. Even though, you, you know, sometimes you do get frustrated. Okay, so you got this emergency bank account. You're putting the money in there, or the money's going in there direct credit every week or end of the month, or whatever. Right? So you're leaving it alone. You don't touch it unless it's a dire emergency, like you just got kicked out of your housing New Zealand house. You need somewhere else to stay. Maybe you need to go to motor camp, pay a bond or something. Whatever you know, or you lost your job and you got so many months to find another job. Okay. Sometimes it's a struggle, but at least that money that's in there will help to pay those bills while you're looking for another job. And then when you get a job, okay, not the first week, but you know, when you can, put that money back. Whatever you use, put it back, okay? Then you keep building it, keep building it, keep building it, right? For the next emergency that might come along. Because we're going to be blunt here, shit happens, right? Okay? Life is not fair, life's a bitch, right? These things happen to you. Other people do the do certain things, and that affects you. They run off into the sunset, never to be seen again. After they've eaten all your food, cleaned you out of house and home, right? Put you into bills like leaving the lights on, every light in the house, laying around, not doing the dishes, you know, just never having a shower, <laughs> sticking up the place, all that sort of stuff, right? And then they're abusive, verbally abusive. They want to come in and you know, smoke their drugs. In front of your kids, that sort of stuff, you know, stupid stuff like that, right? Okay, so you got to get rid of those people. And if, you, if you're too weak or you're too soft, you know, it might be, okay, let's say you're religious and you're, you know, the Jesus thing, right? That spirit, whatever, makes you compassionate, kind, right? They take your advantage of it because they realize, oh, this guy's a sucker, he's a softy, you know? Oh, just like one guy came in, he just basically helped himself in the freezer and ate the bacon, like in about 10 minutes, flat, you could smell it, you know? But too late, he's eating it. Well, he's down to eat it, right? He's sitting down to eat it. So I asked, you've been up to eat my bacon, bro? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, I just fried some eggs. We didn't need this the bacon. He's eating the bacon. Yeah? But at least he was uh, thoughtful and said, well, I could share it with you. So like, yeah, but the thing is, the principle is, you don't come to someone's house, open up the freezer and cook their bacon. You know? I didn't buy it for you. <laughs> yeah, that sort of thing. You bought it for yourself. You see that new one. Oh, that's $3.99. That's a cheap bacon. Five or six pieces in it, yeah, that'll do me. You go to eat it, and someone else has already eaten it. And you're a visitor. Yeah, it's happened before. Like, we got one of the family members, all this, with all these goodies. Yeah, because we loved them, right? Come out in this chicken, eating them all, right? Two pizzas, uh, this cheesy meal things. Whoa, you ate all that? Oh, yeah, I was hungry. You ate all of that? That sort of thing, right? It wasn't for you. Yeah, people do that, yeah? They don't stop and think, right? Okay, so you've got a power electricity plan that keeps increasing. Okay? Like, you signed the agreement, all that, so you, you made an agreement with them, you know, you pay this power thing, you get it real cheap, 
every month, right? Say 95 or $85 or something, right? It ends up being like 100 and something a month. But then you notice after a while the price goes up, inflation, right? But then you notice that they're doing surcharges, they're adding bits and pieces on. It's like, so instead of your 95, uh, uh, whatever, you know, you usually get, you're paying 200, 300. Because they've added bits and pieces on. Okay, get this. We had a, one of those cooking heater things, you know, frying things, air frying things. We're using it for what we saved us power. This guy come around on the property, right, to check the meter. And you see through the window in the kitchen, oh, uh, looks like your, um, yeah, your uh, level of power usage is really quite low, lower than it usually is. Yeah. Uh, oh, 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 you must be wiring it up to someone else's house and using their power. And he's looking for lines to the power line. Was no, bro. You got this um, this air fryer thing, and it saved us a lot of power. Instead of using the oven, whatever you know, oven takes forever to heat up. This thing takes about a couple of minutes, like a microwave, whatever you know. And, and it's good, better for you. No, 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 no. I, I, I think you've got some wires wired up somewhere, and you're using someone else's power. Well, there's accusations, right? Yeah, yeah, and this. Air for I think saved us a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, okay? stuff like that. We're here using our brain, our intelligence. Other people have suggested, well, get off that power grid or those power people because they keep sending you the pamphlet, you pay it. They send you this pamphlet a week later, you owe us. Hey, I just paid the damn thing and now you're sending me a bill, right? And it gets really annoying, right? But like Power Shop, really good. They don't send you those bills, these nasty notes, you know, <laughs> pay up. I've just paid. We'll pay up again to a thing, you know. Well, this is the well, you owe us when you don't, yeah. You can get them to send it to you, it might cost you a dollar or something, whatever, yeah, not that much, but you can do it all online. And plus, the whole thing about it is good about it is you get a discount, right? Okay, usage discount or something like that. It's, it's really good, it's not as good as when we first use it, but it's still good, right? And there's also that bonus that, uh, if you can get other people to sign up on it you get $150 credit on your power all that stuff. Really good incentives, right? So we dropped the other one. Okay? Because they could be fiddling, you know, adding numbers to it on in the power box, something like that. That's what we've sort of heard, right? They can play around and put some more on there, right? You wouldn't know. Okay? Increases, right? All that sort of stuff. Um, okay, so yeah, power shop is really good. We like that one. A friend suggested that, so we jumped onto that. And we pay it when we want. Well, we don't. We if you get a bill, what they do is they take it out of your bank. Okay, you got money in your words. Oh, over overdose, <laughs> overdraft, right? Uh, overdrawn. So when you get money there, it, it, it should come out from the bank. Whatever. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, they give you that option, right? They're really cool. Okay. And then you got the internet. Some of them are like. Well, we're on one at the moment. It's really cool. It's the one we're using now. It's really really cool. Okay, it's a little expensive for, what is it, 100, 100 megabytes, MBPS or whatever it is, that sort of thing, uh, a, a month or whatever. There are other ones which are better, right, the ultra fiber and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, same price, but faster, way faster, all this sort of stuff. You're thinking about, yeah, but we like this particular company because they don't hassle us. They're not giving us crap, okay? You know, saying, oh, you know, and then increasing it by $10, $20, $30, you know, putting extra surcharges and oh, sneeze tax and um, uh, cow fart tax, methane tax, all that sort of stuff on it, right? all that sort of rubbish, right? They're pretty cool. Um, we did have an accident where we had a cane shelf on top of a drawer and put a speaker up above it and it fell down. Maybe the cat played around with it or something, or hopped on it, whatever, way up there, about seven feet up in the air up on the wall, right? And it fell down and it hit the box, yeah? Ruined the box so we couldn't use the internet. So I rang up and said, oh, something wrong with the box because the wires had come out all this sort of stuff. And a guy came around and he fixed it. And he said, oh, is there any charges for that? He said, no, 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 it's all good. No charges. Okay, so we get a letter two or three weeks later, oh, you do owe us $300 because you broke the box. We, we were told it was a power line outside because one of the wires was hanging down. We are like, nah, nah, no way, right? And we've got the letter, figured it out, nah, it's, it's to do with the box, yeah, but this guy said there was no payment, so I rang them up and they said, well, there's no record of you being charged for it, well, it's come from the computer, oh, it must be a computer thing, right, we understand, right, 
and you'd get mad at the person. You get all mad and pull your hair out and yell at them all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so that was cool. But then we get a letter like two or three weeks later, the same letter saying, "Oh, you know, you owe us three hundred, four hundred dollars for that." But, eh? So we ran up and oh, we just ignored it, and the problem just went away, right? Okay, we get letters like that sometimes. Oh, we believe that you, again, were getting a doll while you were working. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, yeah, and we have evidence here. No, we weren't, right? This is one of those housing. Uh, project management type things right? and to uh, involve with the welfare and maybe the uh, kind or all that sort of stuff keeping an eye on you right investigating you and all this sort of stuff because you're in a cheap housing see so you can only earn so much and um, anything more where you have to pay market rent or something like that you know all that sort of stuff. and here's another kicker if somebody comes and damages your house say some hoons you know you, you uh, child's friends, hoons, and they smash up the place, put their cigarettes out, you know, bust the windows, trying to make it a gang pair. You get charged by crying aura for it. Yeah, a couple of windows broken, a door kicked in. It cost you five hundred dollars a week for four weeks. Yeah, that's what we are told. Yeah, so that's two thousand on top of your rent. Well, like, what the hell? So we had to make. Well, we told the person, yeah, pretty much the truth. Um, and we got it fixed. We, we, fi we got. I think we got the money and got these things fixed. Well, they did it. Something like that. Yeah, they did it because we told them our sob story, and they said, oh, "Okay." But this lady was like, "Well, yeah. If you had done it, and we found out you'd done it deliberately, you would have paid five hundred bucks a week, two thousand a month for the damage." We know of other people that had to do that in our neighbourhood because some other idiot come along and just after they got the house painted etc etc he went mental and smashed up all the windows kicked holes in the walls threw furniture through the walls it's like oh bro what are you doing your poor mother you know so you had to restrain him outside you know figure four leg locks and all that sort of stuff to get him to understand mate your mother's got to pay that much money back or so much money to get it repaired again bro use your brain you know it's your mother look what you've done to it all that sort of stuff. Okay, yeah, so you need to look at these internet plans, other internet plans. If you've got like a 12 to 24 month contract, I guess you have to honour it. After 12 months or whatever, you can swap, say like your, uh, what's, it? what's one of the example, uh, Vodafone. You can swap your plan over to or through uh, Slingshot. Right? The person on that end will deal it deal with it for you, you know, taking about a week or so whatever the time frame is and then you switch over to them right but this is what happened to us one day we were on this other service and they said oh because we just paid that month that we owed right this person says oh you got to pay this you got to use it for another month and pay us before we release you and this lady that was on this other service says what the hell this guy won't release you we don't know why you know and it, you know, got hold of him, and that's what he said. Oh, you have to continue using this thing for another month, and then pay us, and then you're off. I'm like, no, we don't. We paid up to date, so if this lady's releasing us, we should be released of it, yeah? Because our contract is over 12 months, yeah? But he keeps saying, oh, uh, uh, uh. it was a sham. It was a, it was a schism, right? Ism. So he ended up paying it to get rid of this guy. And this lady was like, well, that's, yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, and then we find out later on that there's three companies that were offering bonuses and rewards and all this sort of crap were scamming people. They weren't giving them the services that they promised. So what did they do? Oh, geez, it's a big blow to our company. Oh, what we'll do is we'll soften everybody up by giving them six months free, you know, or at a lesser price, say 45 bucks a month instead of 150 or something like that, you know, to be in the good graces, getting back on board and all this sort of stuff. They were scammers, the three top popular ones in New Zealand. They pulled a scam. They got caught, right? So they had to pay all these people back, sort of thing. Okay, so you've got an emergency fund account. All your money goes in there, or a percentage of your money goes in there, $20 a week, or whatever you can afford, right? Direct credit is the best. Don't go there putting it in there. It's like you have to travel there. It's easier to do direct credit, right? And you just basically forget about it, yeah? Yeah? So you don't, oh, I dip into that and I'll go buy the latest PS6. 
uh, big TV and all that, you don't need that stuff. Because you get it, okay, you might use it for a while, oh, this sucks, and you don't use it, it becomes something on a shelf, growing dust. Or some little hoon comes along and breaks in your house and steals it. Okay? Maybe sells it up the road, or visit or whatever. They steal it, so you've lost your um, PS6. It's like when you get a car, right? You buy a car at, say, $10,000. As soon as you take off outside the uh, uh, car yard, it's lost its value, it's devalued. So you walk out of a shop with your PS6 or whatever, it devalues. You bought it for, say, five grand. When you walk out the door, it's only worth about two and a half. Yeah, so if you try to resell it, you can't sell it for that price that you got it for. Well, you can try if you haven't opened the box and you know, all that sort of stuff. You haven't used it, it just sat there, you forgot about it, and played Nintendo or something instead, right? You could probably try and get away with that. You could say, well, it's pretty pretty much new. Give me four or five for it, right? 4,500 or whatever, you know? And they think, oh, yeah, that's cool. You haven't touched it, it hasn't been used. It's all good. Where's the receipt? Blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. You can do that. But if you've used it, it's second hand, isn't it? Okay, so it's, it's devalued. It's lost that price. You can't ask for the price you bought it for. You just can't do that. Okay, so you've got an emergency fund, okay, which you don't touch. You look at an uh, internet company that gives you like those offers for six months, right? And you have a 12 months contract. When your 12 months contract's up, look again. Because you find better offers, cheaper offers, offers, right? Okay, you may get a really good one. They don't bug you. They're not shams. They're not like, Useless, you know, service wise or that sort of stuff, support wise, right? Yeah, you may find a good one, okay? So you enjoy that for so long, okay? Then you look again after your contract's up, okay? You put it in a journal or a diary or whatever, so you know, right? Etc., etc., right? It's somewhere safe, okay? So you know when it's up. So then you look at another one, you keep repeating that process. So you're doing it cheaper, cheaper, six months of 45 bucks, and then you pay 90 or 100 at the end of that, okay? So what you do, you got all this money, so if you've got a job, okay? And you're paying 45 bucks a month, this is just an example, you might pay 50 or maybe 55 or something, right? But if you're paying 45 bucks a month, that's cheap, right? For the next six months, 12 months or whatever. Uh, six months, I think it was, yeah. Minimum, whatever, maximum. Okay, so how you, when you usually pay, say, your other service where you pay 90 to $100 a month, right? You're putting that towards it, yeah. You're paying that instead of paying your 45, you're paying that extra, okay. So when it comes to that point at the end, where you have to start making the hundred dollar payments, you've got the money there. All you have to do is transfer it over. You know, say if you've got a credit card or make a transfer, whatever, okay. Or it automatically comes out of your bank, yeah. That hundred a month. You always got that behind you. We remember seeing a mafia movie where you said, yeah, you should get a job, you should yeah, have a second job, whatever, to have that backup, yeah? It helps, okay? Have, have some sort of uh, job or hustle or something, you know, as a backup. The money coming in all the time. Don't just rely on this and that, right? You always got to have a backup. Okay, so there's also those credit cards, the debit cards you get, whatever, you swipe them at the at the supermarket and all this sort of stuff, any pay and all this sort of crap, and you get charged extra or something like that. I can't, can't remember exactly. It was something like that. You went there uh, after pay, paying for easy payments or something, maybe get extra charges, all this extra money. You're like, what the hell? Okay, the daughter might have borrowed a card to go buy something after pay or something or online or whatever something like that and you, you got to pay this extra charges so like, hey what the hell you know or you you got this pizza yeah you know, uh delivered to you what's that thing called uber or whatever and you look at the bill it says sweden and you got charged seven dollars for sweden like, what the hell is this you know that sort of stuff you've got to be very very careful you've got to manage your money really really well have a record of it look at it and we learned this from one of our parents right when they came back from the shopping, they'd have a look at their list of what they purchased. Hey man, this person at that thing's charged me twice or three times for this one product. So you go back and say, hey, look at this. You charged me three times 
for a can of baked beans or whatever it was, right? Okay. Sometimes you get lucky. Okay. People out there, make take note of this. You might get lucky one day. You might go into New World or something, right? Or Countdown or whatever. And there's a roast there for sale. It's got four dollars ninety-five on it. Grab that roast, man. Put it in your trolley, right? Okay, it's probably supposed to be forty ninety five or something like that. Go up to the counter and buy it. Okay? And it's all legal, everything. Okay? If someone comes up and says, hey, 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 uh, you gotta give that roast back because it's four ninety five, it's wrong, it's supposed to be forty ninety five, fourteen ninety five. Okay? Say no no. I picked it up, I put it in my trolley, so it belongs to me. Okay? One of our parents did that. Found this roast at New World or somewhere, right? Four ninety five, roughly. Right? Nice looking roast, yeah? Hardly any fat on it, whatever. Puts it in the trolley, goes up to the counter, and she's paying for her goods. So I guess to this roast, this guy's coming along, a uh, lady, lady, uh, for the butchers, whatever. You have to um, give us that roast back because uh, there's a mistake made on the pricing. And she knew somehow, how the hell she knew. But she said, you know, no, no, you touch it in my trolley, no, no. You're going to get it, right? Basically, feel good, right? Because once it's in my trolley, it's mine. You can't take it back. That's your mistake. It comes out of your pay or whatever, right? For you making a mistake. And he's like, no, 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 lady. You have to give it back. But the thing was, this manager, probably of that meat department or whatever, happened to be behind her, you know, getting his little goodies or whatever, and he's off, off home, right? End of the day, end of the shift, whatever, right? He said, no, no, leave it alone. That lady is right. Okay? And he, if, if, if it has to, it's going to come out of your pocket, right? So he couldn't do a thing. So she came home and told us, look, I've got this race for five bucks. It's supposed to be 40. I was like, whoa, aren't you lucky, right? Okay, so like we're lucky. We say, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a God karmic payback for being kind to other people out there on the street, having no food, etc., etc., right? Giving them something to eat, right? Uh, reward, karmic payback, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, Getting the shopping, hundred bucks, right? Go to do the, the old New World savings card and the credit card, debit card, or whatever payment. They say, I oh, know, you know, your money's not no good here. Your card's no good here. Why is that? And they go, oh, it just just isn't. They go, oh, okay. It's a funny show. One of those funny shows they're doing, yeah, and then they laugh at you. Go, hey, surprise! And you won all this sort of stuff. But right? see, why is that? And they say, oh, because the man down the end uh, paid for your shopping. It's one of those funny shows, right? No, no, seriously, he paid for it, but he didn't say anything, right? Why is that? Because we realised later, we tried to tell him, hurry up and put all the stuff in there so he could thank him, but went up to the car and he had driven off. Why this happened was because his wife, it's quite a big Muslim woman, went into his aisle, right? To take her little bit of shopping that she had, we had heaps, 100 bucks worth or whatever, right? Obviously. Uh, she had hardly anything. So she said, look lady, you come before us in our line because you've got three or four objects or products or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. So she went to move into our line because the aisle that she went into next to us, which was empty, there's a cashier there, Indian lady. She said, no, 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 it's closed, okay? So she, she said, thank you very much. And he must have been her husband, right? This guy at the end, okay? And then as she moved to our aisle, this lady said, oh no, I'm open now. I was like, oh my gosh, this lady's playing mind games. She decided I'll open it now after just saying, no, no, it's closed. So she goes into there, right? So yeah, this this is probably why this guy paid our shopping, right? Another day, one of these smokers, a young person was dying for a cigarette. Now they look on the street, pick up their old cigarette, <laughs> smoke it, all that sort of stuff. So walking around, end up at McDonald's, says, oh, I've got 26 something uh, for McDonald's, right? Not quite enough, right? Oh, damn, what are we gonna do? There's an island lady, of her two, two children sitting, no, we're sitting on this couch table thing, right? And she's sitting on this table just by it, right? And she says, oh, here you go, um, person. Uh, here's $2 or $3. Have you got enough now? We go, oh, thanks, lady, thanks, lady. And we're talking to her, and she happened to be a Pacific Islander and a Jehovah's Witness, okay? And that's why we no longer have those picky, pointy, bony fingers at them, you know? That we understand that they're human beings, etc., etc. Yeah. Right? Um, so I was telling this uh, friend of the daughter, cheer up, you know, turn your frown upside down. Yeah, so you smile. We've got some money for McDonald's, right? Her husband came around the corner with his order, 
And another order says, no, 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 don't spend your money, I just bought it for you. It's like, oh, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, you know. And then they, maybe eight days, and then they went, like, wow. Chicky, cheer up. And she was all mad because she didn't ever smoke, whatever, right? Yeah, nicotine sitting in whatever. Uh, eating out of whatever. Uh, yeah, we smoke, whatever, right? Withdrawals, whatever. But, so yeah. And then, not so long after that, probably found money somewhere or something else. It was like, this miraculous week that we just keep getting this money, getting paid, you know, you go buy a scratchy thing, two of them, one of them will say, oh, yeah, you won five bucks or something, whatever, say it's ten bucks, whatever, yeah, you be, yeah, the other one will be a dud, right? So you go get another one, and maybe a couple of days later, you forget about it, and you go home and scratch it, oh, you won another five bucks, right? And you take it back, maybe you get three dollars and you know, get another two scratchies for two bucks or whatever, and you go home and forget about it again, Oh yeah, this is in my pocket. You scratch it. Hey, 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 I won ten bucks. You know, so you keep yeah. Some places you go and you keep doing this, right? Went to one place, a place called uh, Pori Rua. Keep getting these tickets, right? Keep going back for an hour because you keep scratching them and winning all this ten bucks, five bucks, two bucks, whatever you know, all the time, right? So he pocketing quite a lot of money. So what this lady did, she's getting upset the shop owner. <laughs> so what she did was she swapped. She got us a different one from a different pile. Yeah, it was, yeah, we went out there scratching it out, yeah, it's a dud, both duds, yeah, okay. She got a red face, and, yeah, oh, I'm sick of this guy winning all the time, you know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really weird. Some people have those sort of attitudes. Okay, so, uh, okay, we went off target there. So, okay, you have the emergency fund account, you have a power electricity plan that keeps increasing, so you find another one where it's cheaper, uh, you pay so much for your internet service like that for so many months, and then you pay the normal rate, right? Every you know, hundred dollars or whatever it is, yeah, for your um, ultra fiber broadband or whatever, right? If you've got a computer and all that sort of stuff, okay. So, uh, yeah, you keep doing that, like you, you, you do your plan, you, you go through your plan, it's finished, you transfer to something else that's cheaper, and you keep doing that, keep doing it, saves you a lot of money. Imagine how much money you can save in six months. Yeah, you cut your normal uh, internet charge in half. Okay, yeah? yeah? and you save like sixty dollars, sixty-five dollars, or fifty-five dollars, whatever. Okay, so we can't add. Yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah. So you save a lot of money, right? So that's the best way to do it. Use your brains, right? And then, if you've got a bit of like, okay, what you do also is in your house. Okay, yeah? you maybe have a lock cupboard or something like that or even a safe if you can afford that. Um, combination, whatever. Get a can. You know, there's cans with the slot in the top and you put coins in there. Just keep putting it in there, keep putting it in there. Or you might find two bucks on the road. You know, you might go get a cup of scratching wins. But you might find some five cents, oh, not five cents, we don't have it anymore. 10 cents, 20 cents, two dollars, whatever, on the road. You pick it up, you put it in your pocket, you go home, you put it in this can. And you keep doing that, and like six months later, it's getting half full, right? Because you're putting your spare change in it. You know, like, like us, we hate having a wallet because uh, or this certain wallet it doesn't have a zipper up the top, right? A zip, and the money falls out. It's really annoying, yeah. Or got a hole in your check suit pants, and it falls down to your leg, to your shoe, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, so you put these coins in this can. Or you say, okay, Mr. Old Person, uh, in the queue uh, at the checkout. Um, how much is okay? How much is our bill? A oh, hundred bucks. Uh, Eighty bucks. Give him a hundred bucks. Oh, okay, he should change it. Well, that old man there. Uh, you don't say that old man there in, in his face, right? You say, hey, that guy there ain't got much. Chuck it on his one, right? And then you go, oh yeah. And then you run away because that person's going to thank you, right? Okay. You go outside, and try to pack up a trolley, get out of there with this food, whatever, right? He comes out, oh thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Damn, he got us. Right, but you say, oh, that's all right, it's cool. Okay, you only had like a little bit of items. You do that, it's called paying it forward because other people pay for our shopping, etc. Et it took us a while to realize that, right? We we're like, nah, nah. <laughs> it's just, okay, the guy paid our shopping, yeah, that's it. Right. None of us pay forward stuff. But we, something in our head said, yeah, yeah, do it. So we're eventually doing it, whether you give it to someone who needs a feed, uh, you take them to McDonald's or buy the McDonald's, you know, happy meal or whatever. Here you go, bro. 
of them are appreciative about it, but you got to be wary of the ones that are sitting there and they're chronic addicts. Right? Alcohol, drugs, got to have their smokes, all that sort of stuff, right? They're trying to get money to do that. How do we know? Because we had a friend uh, years ago was doing the same thing. We came across him, gave him five bucks, yeah, because that's all we had after coming out of this workshop thing, right? Whatever, yeah, because he had lunch or that sort of stuff. Gave that to him because we've known him for years, right? And then his friend come along, this girl, and she was acting all tough, right? Like she was a he-man. Like, what the heck, lady? You know, what's your problem, right? And she asked him, well, what do you do? And she's, oh, I'm collecting money. Or oh, what for? Oh, to get some tinnies, to get some weed. So I oh, stuffed this guy. So we learned from there, don't give them the money. Okay, another guy we were doing that, got on really well for him. We met his mother in a $2 shop. She says, oh, please don't give my son any more money. Well, what's that, lady? Because he goes and buys weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just both, both looked at each other and cracked up, right? <laughs> People like that. That's what they're after. They're trying to get you to buy weed. Uh, give them money to buy their weed, not buy their weed. Um, yeah, another guy came and stayed with us, trying to help him out. And we went up to the shop, whatever, supermarket to get some food and all that sort of stuff. While we were away, he stole stuff and he sold it to um, cash converters. We found this uh, Walkman we had for 22 years because we never used it out in the shed, right? One was broken and it didn't work. It just made a whirring sound and made it with stuff, right? But the other one actually worked. It had a yellow tag around it. You know, like those plastic tags. So we knew it was ours, right? It disappeared. Ended up in this trash converters, right? We saw it in this display. We thought, oh, they're charging $20 for someone to buy it. Like, nah. We knew it was ours because no one in that, our community would have had that being 22 years old, right? Okay? But it still, it was in good condition. Nobody bought it. So we went back a couple of weeks later and it was like cheaper, $10. So we thought we'll buy it back, all right? Looked at it, pretty sure, because everything we'd written down, got a book somewhere with all the serial numbers, receipts and all that sort of stuff as well, right? All these items, computers, everything. Look at the serial number. Yeah, etc. Et so if it ever gets pinched and we see what we think is ours in that trash computer or trade, what they're called, um, we'll look at it. We'll say, can we have a look at that? And then if we can look at the serial number, bro, here's our, here's our book. You might go home and get it and come back, right? Yeah, right, bro. Here's my notebook with that serial number on it. Yeah, match the serial number, compare the serial number. It's stolen. You have accepted a stolen good or stolen goods, right? So that's your um, accomplice to that, right? So they can get done for it. Okay, cops go in and out of that cash computers all the time. Okay, busting them or saying to them, yeah, someone stole something, we go check it out, is it here? And they find it, all that sort of stuff, right? Okay, they don't need that sort of thing for the business. Doesn't make the business look good, right? So yeah, we got this thing back. But this guy that had stolen from us, it okay, was outside talking to these other people that try to collect money and they're sitting on the street singing and trying to collect money, whatever you know, for their alcohol, whatever their habits are. He was out there, right? And as soon as we got it, we said, "Yeah, this looks familiar. This looks like the, this thing that we had, right? Twenty-two years old, blah blah blah." To the guy serving us he said yeah that and he named that person must have stolen it and sold it to us he told us their name outright we're like what the hell so we got it we went outside this guy's gone he must have realized oh oh oh, oh i've been caught you know so he took off yeah yeah because yeah he would have got a you know growling not a knock on the head but a growling right you thieving so and so because we wake up one i wake up one morning or something like that had a nanny nap or something and this guy was outside we went to the wash house or something didn't even know this guy was there and all these things have been taken off the shelves we went, eh? okay went outside there's all these bags out there apparently he climbed through the window in the morning or something one window and stole all the stuff went to the freezer the fridge to have a look it kept the, this cat mints was gone yeah, it's in blocks, yeah, from Mad Butcher. Went out there, this guy had it. Like, oh, bro, do you eat cat food? 
Oh, no, I didn't take that. Oh, I just found it. It just turned up out there. Like, what a load of rubbish. This guy was had a trolley. He was stealing our stuff, right? Well, that's the stuff. Okay. So, well, if you do that again, you know, you'll be minus a few teeth and a nose. Yeah. Okay? Don't come on the property again. But other people still invited him on the property. We had a trespass and there's, oh no, no, he's not on the trespass border. Well, there's excuses. So we got another one for the neighbours to keep him off altogether. Why did they make excuses for him? We, we didn't understand that, right? Okay. Trying to keep this person off the property. They're, they're very good friends with them, but to try and get it across them, you know, we don't want this guy on the property. And now they're saying, don't have him on the property. Uh, hello? Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, what do we say? Okay, emergency fund, to save all your money, when dire straits, uh, change your internet provider to a cheaper one for six months or whatever, save that money in between, if we have to make those monthly payments, um, change your power option to say something like PowerShop, you know, where they don't, don't go full for these ones where they say, oh, give you a free tally, uh, connect your power and your internet and your um, petrol, <laughs> <laughs> and all this sort of stuff with it, you know, all one payment now. Be careful with those ones, right? Just have this single one, right? Where you can pay it, pay so much money to it ahead of time, yeah? And they'll tell you, they tell you, right, they're basically, okay, this is your consumption. Okay, you can figure it out. Ah, somebody here in the house is using too much power. They've got all 20 lights on or something, you know? You've got heaters on when it's a hot day. Yeah, like, what the hell? Because you can see a sudden spike. Yeah, it might be a second freezer. Or fridge or something you got it might be the problem. We turn one off and you know, um, power drop uh, incredibly. Yeah, it's really good. So yeah, even with our rubbish bins, it's not. We haven't put a rubbish bin out <laughs> on the road for like four weeks because other people that were here who use a lot of rubbish, whatever, eat a lot of rubbish as well. They seem to make that accumulation of rubbish in our bins. We haven't put the plastic one out for like three or four weeks. Yeah. There's been no one here to fill it up like that. People used to come on our property, different neighbours, and take the bins and stuff. So, like, what the hell? There's nothing in there. Then they put it out because they want to put their stuff in there, right? We look at it. What the hell is that seven foot chair doing in there? What the, this guy at the back or of us or whatever? He's the one putting all his rubbish in there, bags of grass and stuff. Oh, bro, do you know that's against the law? You can get a five hundred dollar fine or something. Yeah, and you find some other person down the road, Asian or something, he's put their stuff in your bin. Because you, you look at, oh, what's this paper? Oh, it belongs to Ching Chao Wan, or Wao Ching Ching, whatever, whatever, what are their names? I don't know their names. Or Charlie Chan, or whatever, right? Or Sam, whatever, yeah? What the hell? It's got the address on it, a bill, yeah? Say, so, yeah, like, one of our parents used to say, here, they put the bin out and they'll watch, and someone would come along and try to sneak their stuff in there. Hey! Get the hell out of there! Like, put get your stuff out of there. The time you know, it's against the law, or they come to the property and steal her plants. So she go out there and blow them up, and then being you know hard and <laughs> kind woman, if you want the plants, you ask, and we will give you some. You know, and they're like, oh yeah, because they think oh it's all beautiful, you know, plants or whatever. Just help ourselves. <laughs> so yeah, she ended up being friends with them, and they like bought her plants, you know, money trees and all that. And that yeah, it's good like that. Okay. But yeah, people tend to walk on and oh, I will just have that. Well, I'll take that. Uh, yeah, I just walk on your property and um, you know take your rubbish bin and muck around. They'll give me five bucks. Well, that's all sort of crap, right? You know, they're going to do it to every other neighbour. <laughs> then the neighbour comes over and says, so let's cut it out. What? Because he said, there's the door, bro. Come knock on that door. Don't come on this street stores, right? Yeah? But he's alpha male, you know? No, 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 no. He wouldn't listen. So he said, if you want to talk to us, come to the front door. No, 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 no. You know, all this sort of stuff. So we were in the front, uh, went up, up the front there where he was on the French door, porch or it. Bro, as we said, if you want to talk to us, come to the front door. All this sort of stuff, right? Yeah, arrogant. Yeah? Because he's bigger, taller, more solid or whatever, right? Probably a council worker. He says, oh, cut it out. We're like, cut what out? Oh, getting the bins and then knocking on the windows at two in the morning or in the afternoon or something, two in the afternoon, demanding two dollars. So, oh, okay, um, so who is this person doing that? Oh, someone who they said because he's the uh, one of the they, they were European people, right? And 
this guy was uh, Samoan, he's married to one of them. Yeah. Oh, it's come over here to tell you to cut it out. He's trying to tell us what we were doing, right? Oh, this guy is broken English. Well, as you can see, bro, I speak pretty good English, so it's not broken. So you need to go see this guy at the back who has a bit of a... He has, uh, he's not that clued up, right? Okay, here's his problem. Okay, he doesn't know English very well, well, well at all. Go talk to that guy, you know, because you've got the wrong house. So we went and talked to that guy. Well, obviously, he would have communicated with him well because he's Sam Simmons, right? Someone. But yeah, people like that, right? Get the, say, the Jehovah Witnesses or Mormons or whatever turning up. They don't do that anymore because they have the ability to keep them here for hours and hours and hours and hours. <laughs> Even they're trying to go away, <laughs> they've got sore feet, right? Yeah, so they look out. You look out the window, someone said to us, Look, 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 son. Um, those Mormons are in the way having a, JWs are having a talk and they looking like uh, saying to each other, No, no, don't go there because uh, you'll never get away. Uh, he'll keep you there for hours <laughs> the crack up so it says anytime they come to the house and you feel annoyed by them just get me on, on it and um i talked them to death basically and yeah they seem to work every time okay so yeah and then you like chase the discounts at new world your three for five four for five whatever build up your stores have a pantry covered lock it up so any visitors that come don't eat you at a house night like we did have some youngsters gang no not gang they want to be you know, gangsters uh, hoodies <laughs> they they want to come in yeah eat oh there's some noodles here we want to eat these look i've just cooked those same noodles in this pot here oh we want these ones um uh guy uh, they're the same noodles in that packet i just got them from there and cooked them up here oh but we want these ones oh my gosh did this guy ever go to school right know the difference or, or comparison yeah it's the same thing Oh yeah, but we want these ones. Oh my gosh, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, um, yeah, because people like tend to come and help themselves, or you have ice cream, they'll eat it all up. Bro, what a cheeky guy, you know? I don't know you that well. You walk into my house, sort of nudge me out of the way, or, or and eat all the ice cream. Yeah, I ain't putting up with that crap. Or you come and give me crap, say I'm this, I'm that, to impress your daughter or something, you know? you have been a big man. But, bro, you gotta be like that. Don't even bother coming back. You know, <laughs> it only takes so much, right? And it's like he's calling you bluff. It's like a, a woman coming up to you and trying to act all tough, or I'll smack you over, or punch you up. You know? Really? <laughs> really? You, you gotta be good at karate, bro. You know, if I got a black belt in karate, you better be better than me. You better be a ninja or something, right? You know? Why is that? Because like, if if he, you get the first punch, first kick, if it doesn't connect and knock you up. Keep me down. Sorry, but you'll be off in the ambulance in a, um, you say, paper bag. <laughs> One of those bags, right? These medic bags. Yeah. Okay, so again, we've touched on the emergency fund account. So you don't touch the uh, different power people, power shop. Better options there. You can pay when you want it. You know, you can put money on it so that you don't have to worry about it, right? It'll just automatically uh, be taken from your bill. Okay, and you can have a look at the statistics and all that sort of stuff, the usage, whatever. It's really, really good. Trust us on that one. Um, an internet provider that doesn't hassle you, you know, doesn't give you crap, cuts it off for no reason, or yeah. What was it? Um, I can say chaos. <laughs> Chorus, right? When they first started, apparently there's reports here that um, they were just wiring up old <laughs> bits of wire and putting it through person's feet and doing real shoddy jobs, right? that sort of stuff um, okay so yeah those are the things you can do build up your food stores maybe you can get bulk meat instead of going to new world and getting yeah you get the cheap four dollar mints and all that sort of stuff it's about to expire in a couple of weeks or something you can get up those get those really cheap grab heaps of those look for those so you might find 20 bucks worth mints is mints right it's still something you know you don't have to eat mints every day week. Oh, that, that's crazy we tried that and uh, we got so sick of mints, right? So when we got some money, we're like, ah, stuff that mince, man. Hey, I've been eating mince, mince, mince for the last couple of days. So I want something different. So we got sausages, chicken, whatever. Okay, that sort of stuff. You, you chase the deals. Yeah. You might have a, a like we do, we have a, um, a donation box up the road, which tomorrow we'll probably go chuck some tea bags in there. Um, 
this guy gave us some tea bags and baked beans so I'll probably check that in there sometimes it's good because you get bread free bread but we kind of worry about you know anything that's frozen and chucked in there meal made or it's open or we have a look at the date oh this is from 2005 I ain't eating that but some people go nah it's still be good because it's in a can like Ugh. good luck with that bro I ain't touching that or 2015 whatever you know 2020 <laughs> touch any of that stuff yeah sometimes you get books and shoes and all that yeah it's real good stuff donation box someone's brilliant idea okay um okay so these are the things that you people need to do okay you need to become self-dependent independent individuals right not an individual who's part of a massive team <laughs> led by true individuals you got to become in every sense the, the individual according to the definition of that word right so you've got to be self-productive self-reliant self-independent uh, non-dependent on your know, charity government uh all these the dollar and all that stuff you can, you can do that okay that was just, that was how we saved our money right so doing all of these things build up our money okay and then we were owed money because someone paid us wrong yeah but everyone us around us or certain people around us were like give me give me give me uh making excuses to get so much right oh no you don't need a freezer because the first thing was get a freezer get bulk meat right 200 300 bucks worth of meat is better than 200 300 bucks worth of mad butcher meat or new world meat right yeah because some of those sausages are like all bread right all stuffed in there water right it's weird the other day we like hey you got some good sausages lately we cooked up these sausages and forgot about them right who this hissing and carrying on uh, well actually this pot lid fell off we didn't know we thought the cat was trying to get the rubbish yeah, on the beach or something we went out there and this pot had fallen off onto the ground and we wonder why because these sausages had like expanded to like i don't know as big as your wrist right they puffed up right it's like oh okay yeah <laughs> They were big ears. But yeah, yeah, they used to put a lot of stuff, the, the stuffed bread in there and all this sort of stuff, lots of water. You get a roast, it looks pretty good, it's cheap, right? But when you take it home, it shrivels to like a coin. <laughs> it's all fat, you know? Or, or a small rock. It's all fat, right? Where's all the meat? It's sort of shrunk up and then you've got all this fat around it. So yeah, we ask people that made butchers and stuff like that, what do you think of this roast? It's pretty cheap, eh? Yeah, but it's all fat, bro. Yeah, that's right, bro. You know, you know, you go, oh, that's what we've got to do. We've got to go get some hooks and go eeling. Yeah, yeah. See, you live off the land, man, sometimes, you know. You might find the old puha plant somewhere. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Different, um, what's the other one? Maori spinach and all this. Yeah, do an organic garden. Get the seeds from the warehouse. Plant those seeds. Well, we, we're crazy. We plant, plant the whole damn packet and get 20 or 30 bok choys, 20 or 30 spinaches, you know. Or whatever, yeah. Like, whoa. Uh, 20 or 40 radishes hot radishes so they ask the, ask the uh, teenagers here hey you want to eat this what the hell is that it's a radish oh I don't need that What's, what about this box oh I don't need that um, oh okay here's a box uh, with an M on it oh yeah I eat that <laughs> you know because that's all they know they don't, yeah you're telling you they've got to be you got to be healthy oh you got to lose weight uh, uncle you're too fat uh, uh, stop eating this stop eating that and you need the ones eating all that yeah their form of health comes in a box with an m on it yeah and they're trying to tell you how to eat and all that okay yeah so you have to be careful with your after pays your surcharges and all that sort of stuff okay uh be careful with people outside of supermarkets that are asking for money or signs and stuff okay give them food instead okay because they could be, you could be feeding their habits their addictions weed vapes cigarettes alcohol Glue, yeah, all that sort of stuff. Oh, here's another one get to know your neighbors, get to know your best neighbors, right? The ones that are open, honest, fully trustworthy neighbors who are willing or willingly and gladly swap you veggies. They give you plants, you give them veggies, you give them veggies, they give you plants, etc. etc. Right? Products, etc. Put them on your feet. So I've got too much chocos, yeah. Someone gave us a plant. Uh, Buddhist lady, she gave us this plant of chokers, right? And they grew because we, we had these other ones growing from under the house. It was like a, the um, counterfeit version, okay, with the uh, milk in it and all that black seeds, 
the poison, right? So this landlady told us to get rid of that because kids might suck on it and die, you know? It's poison. Yes, yeah, a counterfeit. We did our research on it. So this lady gave us these choco plants, which created a great big leafy wall to stop people from jumping out small fence, right? Well, that sort of stuff. Okay, well, you know, these people were stealing all our stuff. Coming over at night time, early in the morning, stealing our stuff, toolboxes, jewels, whatever, right? They were outside, you know, in a toolbox or whatever, going to the washer, stealing all this stuff. Thank goodness they didn't steal the washing machine and the dryer's too damn heavy, right? Yeah, well, this sort of stuff. So what we did, this is illegal, but it stopped them. We pretty sure somebody jumped the fence because there's like blood on the nails, right? Yeah. We put a wood with a piece of wood with nails sticking up to stop these people, right? So yeah, we think somebody did jump it because and somebody said, no, no, that's, that's just um, paint. How the hell do you, someone came with paint and painted the nails? Or nail polish? Eh. Oh, it's just rust. No, these are galvanized nails. It's not rust. Somebody's jumped on there over the fence and they put their foot on it. Yeah, it's highly illegal. Like, you can't have barbed wire, uh, <laughs> electricity hooked up to it, all that sort of stuff, right? You can't do that. Okay. You can have your fence so high, probably about six to seven feet, but no barbed wire and all that sort of stuff. You've got to have access for, uh, say, if you had an animal, like a dog, it's registered, all that sort of stuff, for the animal control officer to be able to access your back. Or if your dog's not there, they can, they've got an idea that you had a dog or you got a dog, it's not registered or whatever, right? By looking at the pool on the ground or whatever, you know, bones, dog bones, dog dish, whatever. Even if you've got a dog, right? So they've got to have access from, from your, from the letterbox to your door, front door, right? And then at the back, okay? Cops, when they come to bus you order or come to, to get a report, one will come to the front, knock, 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 hello, are you there, right? He'll keep you busy there while the other one sneaks in the back way. Okay, so what do we do? We locked all the fences up, right? Grow trees in front of them. Well, next to them. This guy, okay, we had a tree that's been growing for years and years and years. This neighbor hacks it down with a machete. Which is, this, this tree's actually got this wall, edge of the house in front of it. Oh, I've I, I got to chop it down because my grandma's got to be able to see. It's like, the tree is in line with the edge of the house. So why do you chop it? Yeah, what does she have to see? She can't see anything through, she can see around it, but if she's looking directly at the tree, she's directly looking at the edge of the house. That's dumb, right? Well, he'd come in here still, because they get her, before his sister died, she gave us uh, cumin, uh, not cumin plants, um, taro plants, and we gave her something else, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And these things grew like the jungle. And this guy's out there chopping them at two in the afternoon or something. What the hell are you doing? Oh, oh my friend down the road say he wants some, you know? Oh, your friend down the road can go buy some. <laughs> we'll come up here and ask for some, right? It's all rubbish. He's chopping it, right? Oh, no, he's actually pulling them up. Put it back. Don't come here and pull them up, you know? Oh, 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 okay, okay, friend, you know? You can cut the leaves off. Because apparently another a Tongan guy said down the road, well, you know, if it's all like uh, twisted and all that sort of stuff, it's like doesn't look like a taro, then it's not a very good plant. Or well, it's probably a different kind, whatever. Right? She says, yeah, it's probably no good. So you can use leaves, but we don't know how to do it. We ask people who are salmon, how do you do that, cook these leaves? Should we try to cook it and taste <laughs> yuck, you know, too um, bitter or something? Got to rub it or whatever. That sort of stuff, right? So this guy's coming on property and just helping himself. Right? Or peeking over the fence, looking at us in the afternoon. Or looking through his window, he's like trying to hide behind his curtain from his house. I can see you, bro. The curtain's moving. I can see your face. You know, with that sort of stuff. Or he's like going past the side window, and he's like peeking and looking at the younger daughter. I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> yeah, creepy dude. That sort of stuff. You know? And his, his nephew, when he's younger, just walks in the house like he's looking for the younger daughter. What the hell? Yeah, just walk on in. <laughs> Who's this boy? Kick it out here. Get him out here. You know, he didn't know he's a kid, right? He's just looking for a friend or something. Yeah, he's interested in her, whatever. Um, yeah, so we're giving you all these advice there. Um, if you have problems with people, okay, don't forget to ring the cops. Get a trespassing order. Okay, so get to know your neighbours. 
okay, who willingly trade you, you know, vegetables and stuff, some, or products yeah, they don't use it anymore. I've got a vacuum cleaner, it still goes, but uh, something wrong with the hose, maybe you can put some tape around it. Do you want it? Yeah, okay. So you give them VGs or something to equal value, right? Oh, how much is that worth? Oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, you know, I give them some cash, or you go, oh, I've got this thing here, how would you like that? Probably worth about equal uh, value, and this and this and this is a TV. Other people down the road keep giving us TVs, we end up with like eight TVs, but is it that stage where the TVs are useless? Because they've changed them to the new flat ones, right? Um, yeah, so you can't watch TV on those real old, big, thick Panasonic senior ones, right? We've still got those, they're good for playing uh, your grandchildren, whatever, coming over, playing those video games. Uh, Nintendo, PS1, PS2, PS3, PS4, whatever on the right. That's what they're freaking good for, playing videos. Yeah. Uh, you said, stop, stop, stop giving us too much TVs, man. It's like an Asian man, you couldn't speak English very well, and his granddaughter says, hey, he's giving you a TV with his cabinet. Oh, okay. So he said, oh, we've got, we've got one, look, you've got two, three over there. Here, here, to this other dude, here, take it, take it to your house. And he's had it ever since. Stuff like that, so yeah. We, um, get on well with the neighbours. Okay, sometimes we throw lemons over the neighbour's house. <laughs> you get them from this tree, this, uh, this uh, Muslim man's tree. Okay, this is the thing. This is what we found as well. Okay. It's a common law. It's a law in New Zealand. If there's fruit hanging off a tree, which is on your side of the fence, if you pick it, you are a thief. You're stealing it. If it drops on the ground, well, it's on your property, isn't it? But that tree, if the food on goes back to his property, it's growing on his property. So if you take it, you've stolen, right? So, oh, okay. There's even another one that's really weird that you can't have a miner in your house and talk to her. <laughs> well, this sort of stuff. Well, you know, if you have a, a daughter that has school friends and all that, it's like, hey, uh, that's a law. Uh, you, you can't do that. You can't talk to them. Uh, it's a bit bendy there, you know. I mean, like they say, hello, how you doing? Um, I'm talking to you, how you doing? <laughs> Not to respond to them according to the law or something, it's real weird. So yeah, so we asked them, you know, um, we found that there's a law, common law in New Zealand, you can't, you know, just take the limits off the trees. He says, well, you're like a neighbour, or you're a neighbour, and you're like a, a brother, you know, all this sort of stuff. Real genuine, not faking it, right? No fake smile and all this sort of stuff. You know, saying, no, give me $20. Um, yeah, real genuine Muslim guy, yeah? She's no, you're like a, you're my neighbour. You're like a brother. You like, you know, we are all human beings. So that's why we change our attitude towards Muslims, towards any other religious person, because at the end of the day, they are human beings. They're still human beings. It's just they got their religious, the religion they believe in, the holy books, the customs, traditions, whatever, you know, whatever they believe is whatever they believe. Whatever we believe is we believe, right? Their business is their business, is not our business, right? Same as our business is not their business. Okay? So if they come over and start saying, oh, how much money you got? Uh, who stays here? Uh, when do you get paid? Uh, how much do you get paid? Uh, what's your job? Well, 20 questions. Now, it's, it's none of your business, bro. My business is not your business, as mine is not yours, right? Yeah. So yeah, you get to know the neighbours, right? The neighbourhood watch. Yeah, good. If neighbours watch out for crooks, you know? stealing coming and stealing throughout your neighborhood go to one house stay there get kicked out because they stole from those people who were very kind to have them there they go to another friend's house they he's there for a while they steal from that guy get booted out of there you go to someone else's house you know someone else's house they're ripping off everybody in that particular area because other people are telling us oh yeah this guy he's living in our street and he's been ripping people off yeah this is this guy right yeah 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 that's a guy how do you know that because he's been doing it over here yeah okay, if you see him well you know give him a slap get a trespassing this, you know, stop them from doing it, yeah, warn the people, there's two ladies that are getting in their car, in the street, like, we're going to come back with this cover we found on the side of the road, they've been there for a while, a uh, shelf, right, watch out for this guy, who looks like Jesus, He's, he likes to go around your property and, you know, steal your stuff, okay, whatever he can get hold of, he'll sell it, he'll put it in the trolley, shopping trolley, he finds, and then wheel it up to cash converters and sell it off, Okay, whatever you can get for it, because one day he turned up with um, toasters and they're all dirty and uh, sandwich makers. Like, Where'd you get this one, bro? Oh, I found it. 
and then they try to steal this guy's motorbike that didn't work from his shed at the back of the house. Like, all that sort of stuff. It's like, oh, bro. Yeah. Sticky hands. Yeah, so you got to keep these infiltrators. Okay, we put here infiltrators, because that's what they are. They're traitors. You know, we put N I N F I L dash traitors. Okay, because they use and abuse you. Okay. Eat you out of house and home, steal from you, keep asking you for money, knock, knock, knock every Tuesday, or I'm getting paid tomorrow, can you give me 70 bucks? I'll pay you on Friday. Never do. And they keep doing it every week. Nah, nah, nah. Sorry, but um, uh, one of my family members is now my bank manager, <laughs> my accountant. So, no, um, they've got the cards. Uh, I can't do that. Excuse like that, right? It's good, it works. They go, oh, okay. They know you're lying, probably. And they come back, yeah, uh, I just wondered if, nah. Here you go. You wait here, I'll go get you some food. You, you're hungry, you poor thing. And they're following you to the freezer. You open it up, you don't know they're behind you. Oh, I'll have that, and that, and that, and that, and I'll have that chicken, I'll have those bacon, I'll have that. No, you won't. You know, you have what I give you. Yeah. Oh, don't be like that. Yeah, well, you be like this and get lost. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, because we have done things for people and they say, we'll pay you on Thursday. Uh, yeah, well, that was like, how many months ago? Six months ago? And then see them again, they've moved. Oh, yeah, well, pay, uh, I saw you see any bucks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I guess we're getting that in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, but they're giving their money away to everybody else. Oh, the guy's dog lost his leg. Go get him a robot leg. Oh, my gosh. And it dies. <laughs> the thing actually died. Well, that sort of stuff. Oh, I've got to pay for its funeral. But, oh, my gosh. Are you all right there? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so watch out for these infiltrators. Yeah. If they, yeah if you're too soft or whatever, you're Christian, you're too kind and all that sort of stuff. You're being weak and you're going to take advantage of it. You keep giving them charities, kindness, it's all good, but you keep doing it, you keep doing it. Eventually they'll go, wow, well, this guy's a sucker. I'll walk all over this guy. I'll take off everything he's got, steal, etc. Yeah. Okay, get a trespassing notice. Call the cops if they're pretty useless. <laughs> uh, get a trespassing notice from the police station and throw it at his feet. Because once it's thrown at his feet, it's served, right? They can pick it up and throw it, use it as toilet paper or whatever, but it's been served. Okay, you do one for the police station and handy one. Okay, you got to keep off your property. Yeah. Yeah, and stop these infiltrators who think that they can just walk and in, walk into your home, open your freezer, cook your food like your bacon, and eat it real fast, and then leave. And say, oh, no, no, I'm not eating the bacon, and you see them with a mouthful of bacon. Yeah, uh, you may get money. Use it wisely. Okay. Someone might owe you money, like the tax department or the welfare or whatever. They screwed up and they say, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, we had uh, one coin aura, yeah, that were taking extra money out of the bank, saying, oh, you owe this for rent, 286. What? The rent isn't that much. Oh, yeah, but, 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 you didn't pay here, you didn't do this. And it turned out to be a lot of rubbish. It's just this guy's taking it and probably pocketing it. <laughs> yeah. And they say, oh, here's, a, sorry about that. Yeah, it seems like we made a mistake. Here's your money back. Yeah, that sort of tricks, right? That sort of tricks. Yeah. People sending us notes saying, oh, you owe us this, you owe us that. Uh, we actually got the wrong address, you know. We don't owe you nothing. We should do. Is your name so-and-so? Yeah. But we don't owe you anything. Because we're not tied with you. I don't know how, how you got our name or that. You don't see that we're part of your business or your group or whatever. Never heard of you. Or people ringing up saying, oh, um, I'm from the push-button company, Bitcoin push button or something, whatever the name is, and you know, this is a really good deal, blah, 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 okay, uh, how did you get my name, oh, you signed up for our business, and uh, no, I didn't, yes, you did, no, I did not, yes, you did, no, I did not, uh, because my computer was broken for six months, <laughs> so how could I have signed up for your business in the last two weeks, come on, man, you know, trying to pull the wool over your eyes, they hang up, right? Another one will ring up five minutes later. Uh, okay, can you take me off your um, 
list please oh and they're really nice yeah yeah so they say yeah i'll do that and then someone else rings up 10 minutes later what the hell because what they're doing is they're following you around the internet okay they are following you around the internet someone's selling them your information when you sign up for a survey or something a free offer online that's what they're doing okay so that's why you get all this rubbish in your um spam box or your gmail which is pretty useless anyway because it takes forever to get rid of all that rubbish yeah you say oh yeah click on 200 of them and then you still you know it's slow oh, it's just crap so you got to fully protect your computer yeah all that sort of stuff because there are people checking you trying to hack you trying to get your information your credit card and passwords all that sort of stuff right be very very careful uh yeah so yeah again be very very careful so we are hoping that this video really gives you insight it may be really long but there's just so much that we want to help i want to present to uh new zealanders especially you know you're being um duped here and there you're being tricked you're being controlled all that's true right to an extent okay you got to get out there and you got to be independent you got to be the individual uh, you got to be a self-reliant self-producing self-sufficient all the selfs except selfish right it's all about you first and your family your house and all that sort of stuff okay before you can help anybody else you have to help yourself you have to be secure financially etc etc okay all these ning nongs that come to your house they want 20 bucks 30 bucks 40 bucks they want to eat all your food tell them to get lost right